Wow, what a great couple of days it's been, and I'm so, so honored to, to be here with you. And I, uh, I want to take you back to almost two years ago, September of 2020. In September of 2020, I walked away from a full-time job. I walked away from a nonprofit I helped start. Uh, I walked away from a job during the middle of a global pandemic. And I walked away from a job that had health insurance. <laughs> Ever been there? And I wasn't walking away from a job to go to another job. You know, have you ever heard the adage, never leave a job unless you have a job? Maybe your grandfather shared that with you. Well, I broke that law because I was moving from one job to just an idea. And when people asked me, Jeff, what are you going to do? It was really kind of this meandering description. And it kind of sounded like this. Like in today's world, I believe that doing good is good for business. And it's no longer about being the best company in the world. It's about being the best company for the world. And in a hypercritical, cynical world, often known for what it's against, let's be a group of leaders. Let's be business people. Let's be nonprofit leaders that are known more for who and what we're for. And as I'm meandering through this description, my constant companions of fear, doubt, and insecurity would show up. And they would start talking to me. Or maybe I'm talking to myself. By the way, how many of you talk to yourself, right? Yeah, there's the honest people. There we are. So they would say, you don't even have a, you don't even have a product. What are you doing? This is going to be a total and complete failure. What, what, what are you doing? But what I had was I had a hope. And what I, had, what I had was a dream, a concept. But you know what I've discovered in these two years? Is that the bank doesn't deposit hopes and dreams. <laughs> uh, I've asked them. They said no, okay? And so, um, but you've been there. But well, what I want to do is I want to actually take you back to that moment in September of 2020. I want to take you back to my last day um, at this nonprofit. It was the church. And this is, um, this is a picture of, of my last day. Um, the team surprised us. My wife, Wendy, and my daughter, Jesse, my son was away at college. They surprised us with an outdoor like concert thing and they had this finish line. Lauren Espy, who was on our team then, and she's on our team now, uh, she created this finish line. And we were literally walking to the finish line. And this is moments before I'd finished that, that cross through the finish line. Let me tell you what I'm thinking in this moment. I'm thinking, oh, no, what have I done? Um, can I change my mind? What, Jeff, why are you such a dreamer? Jeff, this is, you're going to fail. Who has my car keys? Jeff, what is going on here? That's all that's going on in my mind right now. And if I could, here I am almost two years later, if I could, what I'd love to do, if, for, for, if someone would hurry up and figure out time travel. In fact, here's what I believe about plywood. Someone here at plywood is going to figure out time travel, okay? And if you could hurry up and figure that out, what I would like to do is tell that guy in the picture the lessons that I've learned over the last couple of years. Because I've learned a lot of lessons. But since no one has yet figured out time travel, what I want to do is, since I can't share the guy in the picture, I want to share with you what I've learned over the last couple of years. And here's why I want to share this with you. Because what I know about you is you've had your seasons of next as well. If you and I were to have a cup of coffee and, you, and I would say, hey, tell me about your career. Tell me about your story. You would say, well, I had a last day of something that was pursuing a first day of something. You have your seasons of next. You've been in this moment as well. What I also know about you is that there are seasons of next heading your way. And we've all heard about the great resignation, right? Like millions of people are quitting their jobs and we're asking the question, why? Well, that's a really good question, but... Maybe a better question or an equally good question is, well, what do we do now? Millions of people woke up this morning asking the question, what do I do next and what do I do now? And at some point, that's going to come to you. And so what I want to do is I want to walk you through kind of my journey of how to figure out what to do next. But I want to share with you real quick, my, this, my goal today isn't to get you to quit your job, all right? My goal today isn't for you. So for those of you that brought your teams here, rest assured, that's not what this is about. What I'm here to do is to make sure that you're, you and I are continuing to make sure that we are bringing the next best version of you and me. Uh, there's a friend of mine, David Farmer. He's on the plywood board. David has worked for the same company for over 30 years, and yet David has consistently been promoted over time at that organization because David is consistently bringing the next best version of him. And yet, for some of you over the last couple of days, you bumped into an idea, and you're secretly plotting how to leave your now for your next that's what plywood will do for you. Or some of you have been sitting on a dream for a while and you've been holding on to now so long because of fear, doubt, and, in, and insecurity. I just want to let you know I know that. I've been there. But you can't receive something in these hands and let you, until you let go of what's now. So however this hits you today, I just want to let you know we should all be moving forward to the next best version of you. At the end of the day, we all need to be asking how do I figure out what to do next? And if it's not for you, maybe it's for someone you know. 
For example, if you know someone, th- th- by the way, this is the only audience participation moment in my talk, okay? Anytime a communicator tells me to do something, I'm like, you can't tell me what to do, okay? So don't be me, all right? So if you know someone in your circle of influence, in your circle of friends, who are currently in a season of trying to figure out what's, what to do next, can I see your hands? Look at that. It's all of us, right? We all know some people, and sometimes those people are us. But I'm not going to romanticize what's next. What's next is really, really hard. It's wonderful. It's great. It's growth, and we're going to talk about that. But I want to show you a picture of what next can look like. Just to be honest, and, you know, we're being honest and authentic. That's part of who we are at Plywood. This is what next can often look like. (laughs) Ever been there? Now, this is an actual picture that I took, and let me describe the background of this picture. Just a few weeks after that first picture I showed you, I was venturing down this new road that I'm in, and I got a call from someone who I thought this was my first big, this is our first big deal for this new season. They informed me that, I'm sorry, Jeff, we're going in a different direction. And I had to do what Scott talked about last night. I had to go for a walk. And I go for a walk, and I run into this guy, this turtle. And you may not be able to see this, but there's a curb there. And from what I can tell, the turtle was trying to get to a higher level. They were trying to to grow, trying to get to a higher plane at life. And yet the turtle apparently got to that curb and fell over backwards. And I don't know if turtles think, but if they do, here's what I think the turtle was thinking. I just should have stayed where I was. It was much more comfortable. I knew the route to work. I was getting paid every two weeks. I had health insurance. I knew it just, I just should have stayed where I was. But here's what I believe when you have the courage to venture out. Uh, I'm a person of faith. I feel like there's a spiritual aspect of this. But I think when you venture out, there are like-minded people that come your way. I don't think that's a coincidence. I don't think it's a coincidence as this turtle is trying to climb to a higher ground. Here comes someone walking down the road who's trying to climb to a higher ground. And I just bent down. I I whispered to him. And I said, buddy, I know exactly how you feel. (laughs) And so what I did is I just picked him up and I placed him on higher ground. Because while it's true, people need people, sometimes turtles need people too. <laughs> and I don't know if you know this, but this is amazing. Uh, he, this turtle just recently launched a subscription pro platform on Fanbase. It's just amazing, okay? So that's what happens when you kind of venture out there. But I want to tell you, it's really, really hard. And when you venture out to the next best version of you, sometimes when you go, I'm going to let go, even in the midst of a global pandemic. I mean, Plywood, this is the first time in my career that I haven't been paid every two weeks. I don't know where the money's coming from, right? And here's the price that you pay if you're going to pursue next. You're going to pay the price of discomfort. But discomfort is the price for growth. You see, sometimes the greatest risk isn't leaving. Sometimes the greatest risk is staying because you never might know who you could have become when you ventured out. But I just got to tell you, the last two years for my wife, Wendy, and me, it's been a serious, one word if you want to describe it, is discomfort. I've been uncomfortable, but I have grown more in these two years than maybe the last 20. I mentioned David Farmer. David has this quote. He says, if you're the same person six months from now, you're falling behind. If you're the same person six months from now, you're following him behind. Remember, I told you, David hasn't left. He's been with the same company for over 30 years. But I'm telling you, this next version of David continues to grow. And here's why this is so important. Opportunities flow to those who grow. Opportunities flow to those who grow. I'm I'm 57, folks. I'm halfway dead. And here's what I've discovered in my life. Those who have a passion to grow, opportunities just seem to flow. But you got to do something to make that happen. One of my favorite quotes is from Catherine Booth. She's the co-founder of the Salvation Army. She said this. She said, if we are to better the future, we must disturb the present. What that means is if you and I are going to grow toward that next best version of you, that means that sometimes we have to let go. Sometimes we have to get very uncomfortable. And so what I want to do is I want to share with you kind of my strategies over the last 20 years of making career moves, trying to pursue what's next. And each one of these moves, I was leaving organizations that were working really, really well. When I left Chick-fil-A to move to start a church in the Atlanta area, I mean, I went from a multi-billion dollar business to starting a church. That's a huge risk, right? And so what I want to do is to share with you the strategies that I implemented. And and, and in this, I wrote a new book called What to Do Next, and there are seven strategies in that book. I want to share two of those two with you today and two thought converters. 
Two strategies and two thought converters. I'll explain what I mean by thought converters in just a second. But my hope today is that you'll be able to take these strategies. And I'm, as I mentioned, I'm not asking you to leave your job. I'm just asking you to continue to take that next step forward to bring the best version of you. And sometimes, though, that means that idea, that dream, that hope, you got to let go to pursue what's next. So two thought strategies and two thought converters. Uh, converter. Strategy number one is simply this. Don't let what you don't know rob you of what you can do. Don't let what you don't know rob you of what you can do. So when I talk to people who are trying to venture out and make their next move, they begin sometimes, oftentimes actually, they go, Jeff, there's so much. I mean, what, what's going to happen with the economy? And, and what if this doesn't work? And what if that doesn't work? And there's so much. And they can get paralyzed with what they don't know. And I can say, you can live there or you can actually focus on what you can do. And there are some things that you can do to move you forward. So let me give you an example of what I mean by that. So a few weeks after we had left uh, the church, uh, Wendy and I were in Florida uh, in November of 2020. I was speaking at a conference with John Maxwell. You may be familiar with John Maxwell. He's written more on leadership than any author Uh, He's just kind of the leadership guru. So I was speaking at a conference. John went first, and he had this quote. And I'm telling you, Plywood, when John Maxwell said this quote, I just, it was such a gift to me. And I hope it's a gift to you, especially if you're wondering, how do I figure out this? John said this. He said, I never had a clear vision. I just kept moving forward. I I never had a clear vision. I just kept moving forward. I'm like, whoa, 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 time out. I understand how a mere mortal like me can't have a clear vision, but you're John Maxwell. You speak in plaques. People write things and put them on plaques, what you say. You've written millions of, I mean, people have bought millions of your books. You've never had a clear vision. And what I began to understand is I just got to keep moving forward. And it it was the clue, it was the secret to me about courage. You see, courage isn't the antidote to fear. Action is. What I mean by that is when you and I take a step forward, courage will follow. I just got to keep moving forward. So when I have a tough day and when I get a no, I give myself the 24-hour rule. The 24-hour rule is I'm going to grieve, I'm going to moan, I'm going to complain, I'm going to mope around the house, I'm going to go look for turtles outside to help, I'm going to do all of that. And at the end of 24 hours, I'm going to get moving. I'm going to call somebody, I'm going to make a, I'm going to write something, I'm going to do something to keep moving forward. And the reason this is important is when I talk to people and they say, Jeff, how did you eliminate risk in these career moves? And I said, I got bad news and good news. The bad news is, is you can't eliminate risk. But the good news is, is you can shrink it. And if you'll shrink it, what that means is, is you don't have to take this, make this massive leap over the Grand Canyon. But you can maybe take a leap over a mud puddle. Yes, you may get wet and muddy, but at least you've done the work to prepare yourself to shrink the risk. This is why um, we created something, as I kept hearing, How do I eliminate risk? How do I eliminate risk? Like, hey, you can't eliminate risk. You can manage it. So our team created this free assessment. It's called the Career Risk Calculator. For those of you that raised your hand that said, hey, I have a friend that's trying to figure this out, you just need to send them this Career Risk Calculator. And and if you can't get the QR code, it's just at jeffhenderson.com. Basically, this gives your friend a red light, a yellow light, or a green light. A red light doesn't mean you're a failure. A red light means, whoa, 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 time out. Before you make this move, you've got some work to do, and it gives some specific steps for them to shrink the risk. The green light doesn't mean you got to move, you got to go, you got a green light. doesn't mean that. It says, okay, you've done the great work. Here's some other things that you should consider before you make your move. But all of this is under the guise of simply this. Don't let what you don't know rob you of what you can do. There are some things that you can do to figure out what to do next. That's thought strategy number one. Strategy number two is simply this. The path to your dream job often leads through your day job. The path to your dream job often leads through your day job. What I mean by that is when I coach people or talk to people about, you know, their career and, Jeff, I don't like my day job and and I want to do this or that, we'll eventually come back to this. And I'll go, okay, look, now here's my number one piece of advice. Go back to your day job and do your very, very best. And they go, Jeff, are you not listening to me? I, I don't like my day job. And I say, I totally understand that. But I'm saying to you, in the context of your day job, your dream job. There are things for you to learn and listen 
and understand. I'll give you a couple examples. Years ago, uh, when, when, when I worked for the Atlanta Braves, this is when the Braves weren't any good. I mean, I've lived in Atlanta all my life. We've built more stadiums than we've won championships, Atlanta people. So, so I was back in the, this is Atlanta, Fulton County Stadium days, and I worked in the promotions department, and they gave me all sorts of things to do. They wanted me to sell program ads, basically calling up Coca-Cola and go, hey, would you like to put a you know, program, an ad in the program. I was terrible at it. I stuttered, my palms sweat. I was awful at sales. But I was really good at coming up with ideas, writing promotional scripts, working with corporate sponsors. And I remember telling my dad, I was so focused on what I was bad at. And my dad said, oh, no, 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 no. Day jobs are a clue. They're a clue to help you understand what you're not good at and a clue for you to understand what you are good at. And if you'll pay attention to what you're good at, your day job will help lead you to your dream job. Now, when I talk about this, their, your day job, my day job, it's a huge opportunity for us to do something. In fact, when people come to me and say, Jeff, I just lost my job, because sometimes next happens to us. We don't happen to next. Sometimes next happens to us. The company gets downsized. A new boss comes in, all of that. And so they say, what's the first thing I should do? And I, and, and I say, well, the first thing you should do isn't to update your resume, although that's important. The first thing you should do isn't to post on LinkedIn, although that's fine. The first thing you should do is get out your phone, look at your contact list, and make a list of the top 10 people of influence in your contact list and call them immediately and ask them for breakfast. And here's why this is true. Your personal net worth is largely determined by your personal network. And I talk to people all the time that don't value or don't leverage their personal network like they do. Here's what I believe, especially if you're in a season of next. I believe you're three to four coffees or three to four appointments away from finding that first or that next next. I mean, let me illustrate it. All of us here at Plywood today, apparently we are just six degrees away from Kevin Bacon from Footloose, okay? So if you're just six degrees away from Kevin Bacon, you're three or four people away from your next opportunity. But it's not just having coffee with them. I want to give you the best networking question I've ever heard. And I'm telling you, if you meet with people in your network and you ask them this question and you build your network, it'll be a gift to you and the people that you serve. And the best networking question is simply this, who do you know that I need to know? Who do you know that I need to know? And follow up, would you contact them on my behalf and ask them to have coffee with me? This is a fantastic question. Again, don't let what you don't know rob you of what you can do. And who in your day job, what circle of influence can you be doing or be building right now? Every single one of us should be building our network. You know who is the master at this? Jeff Schinnerbarger. I mean, look at that guy. I mean, he's amazing at this. He's one degree away from Kevin Bacon. Okay, so Jeff understands this, but look around. Look at what he's done. That's the power of networking. And so when people come in and they're, I don't like my day job. Okay, I understand that. But you're meeting people who can help you take the next step. So those are two quick strategies. Finally, I want to move toward thought converters. What do I mean by thought converters? Well, there's a principle here, and the principle here is simply this. How you view life determines how you do life. How you view life determines how you do life. Let me give you an example. Uh, most of you are too young to ever even know what this thing is. Um, does anybody know what this is? Yeah, there's my people. This is a viewfinder. I walked in today, and the security uh, guard said, it's a viewfinder. I just hugged her. It was awesome. And so what is a viewfinder? A viewfinder, by the way, this is back in the day when you didn't have to have batteries or wires for toys. And so what you would do is this has a little view, but what you do is it gave you these little cartridges, and as you put them in the viewfinder, you would just do this, and you would get a different view. Well, every single one of us today, you wake up every day, and this is how you view life. But how you put, what you put in here is your thought converter. And I want to share with you two thoughts that I had to be emotionally aware of that were affecting me. And if I didn't, if I wasn't aware of that, this thought converter could lead me down a negative path. So let me, let me give you uh, a, a couple of thought converters and how I had to replace those thought converters that would help me in this season of next. Thought, the first thought was simply this, what if this doesn't work? What if this doesn't work? And really it was tied up to what if this doesn't work and what if I don't work? What if this is a failure and what if I'm a failure? And I began to have this thought that, oh, no, I'm going to be a failure and this isn't going to work. And, and I could get into this catastrophe mindset. And so when I recognized that, I had to convert that thought. 
instead of looking life like this, I had to replace the cartridge with a different question, with a different thought converter. And the thought converter was simply this, what if this does work? What if this does work? And I had to be focused on, you know, if this does work, hey, maybe two years later, I could be speaking at Plywood, or I could be going here and working with this organization, or I could be working here and going with this organization. I mean, last Friday, I was in San Antonio speaking to the National School Board Association. That wasn't anywhere on my horizon two years ago. But if I kept moving forward, if I leveraged my personal network and my personal context, and if I began to go, you know what, if this does work, I can go to the National School Board Association, for example, and let's talk about what do we want to be known for around here. I had to be focused on what if this does work. And for those of you that are trying to figure out what to do next, you can't, you can't get paralyzed with what if this doesn't work. you got to understand the potential of what if this does work. The second thought converter, it was simply this. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't, I've, never, I've never done this before. As I mentioned earlier, uh, in my career, I've gotten paid every two weeks. Um, I don't know how to find health insurance. My wife and I had to figure that out. I mean, there's all this stuff that we didn't know what we were doing, and I could have, I could have let all of that just rest on my shoulders, and so I had to convert it. I couldn't let that negative thought lead me down a path every day, so the thought I had to change it with was simply this. Hey, I've never done this before. I'm doing something I've never done before. I'm learning. And so the question I had to begin to ask myself is, hey, what am I learning? What am I learning? What am I learning? And that thought converter for me, hey, what if this does work? And I've never done this before. What am I learning? It allowed me to take those thoughts and shift them and convert them into a more productive path. And all of that takes me back to this moment. The question I get over the last two years is, Jeff, would you do it again? Jeff, with all the stuff, the ups and downs, the wonderful days, the hard days, the the uncertainty, the phone calls of no and the phone calls of yes and all that, would you do it again? Well, I want to show you another picture to close. A year after this, uh, my wife Wendy and I found ourselves in San Francisco. We were serving a, a nonprofit out there that was doing some phenomenal things for their community. And they were out there serving them. Uh, it was a Saturday morning. Uh, it was a chilly Saturday morning in San Francisco. We were sipping blue bottle coffee, which you can't get in the South. And uh, it was just beautiful. And I just, it hit me. Oh, wow, we've been gone a year. And I just looked at my wife and I said, we need to capture this moment and remind ourselves that it was worth it. Uh, and this was that moment. Um, and what you might not see are the sleepless nights. What you might not see are the, how do we figure this out? What you might not see are the, the discussions, which is a wonderful way of saying arguments. What you might not see is, um, honey, I think I want to just go back. What did I do? What you might not see are the ups and downs. But what you will see is absolutely, absolutely, I would do it again in a heartbeat because we're stronger, we're better. And in our little way, we're trying to make the world a better place. So my plea for you today isn't to leave your job. (laughs) My plea for you today is not to make some rash, unwise decision. But my plea for you is if you're holding too tight because you're scared of what to do next, what we need you to do is to let go and to receive the courage and the fear, to let the courage drive the fear away. And if you're afraid today, I'll just close with this. One of the reasons Jeff and the team did this is to remind you, you don't have to be alone. You heard Jeff say that just a few minutes ago. This is a community of people that understand how hard this is, but they understand how worthwhile it is. Because for my wife Wendy and I, we would tell you, the last two years, it's not been easy. But we didn't sign up for easy. We signed up for worthwhile. And that's how you change your world, and that's how we collectively change our world. Thanks.